Hello again. In the previous lecture, I told you about orthonormal bases. Orth an orthonormal basis, remember, is a basis where each vector has length one and every two vectors are perpendicular to each other. So this is the kind of basis you would use if you were building a scaffold or drawing a grid on some plane or in three-dimensional space. I want all the, um, all the rods of my scaffold at right angles to each other and I want everything spaced out at distance one. I told you orthonormal bases are really good for computing geometric things because lengths and angles and dot products work the way you think they do. I told you that orthonormal bases are good for computing orthogonal projections. And I did not tell you how to find any orthonormal bases. So that's what we're going to do now. And we're going to do it using a method called the Gram-Schmidt algorithm. So here's our goal. Our goal is that our starting point is some subspace L. Maybe it's the image or the kernel of some map. Uh, what's represented just pictorially by some two-dimensional space L. And in that subspace L, we have a basis. Here's basis vector V1, here's basis vector V2. And V1 and V2 do not have length one, and they are not at right angles to each other, they're just some basis vectors. And we want to replace them by better basis vectors which do have length one and are at right angles. So I'm going to get into the details, but the first thing we're going to do is we're going to rescale, whoops. We're going to rescale V1 to make a new vector U1, which will have length one. And then after we do that, we're going to make another vector u2, which also has length one and is perpendicular to u1. And it's hard to draw this well on a screen, but I am trying to draw that u2 is in the same plane as v1 and v2. All of these things are in the same two-dimensional plane, but that u2 has length one and is perpendicular to u1. And I want to say, I'm going to have a teaching problem here, which is there are a bunch of other useful comments and side notes I could give, but there's also a complicated messy algorithm here. So in this lecture, I'm going to just try to walk through the complicated messy algorithm. And in the following week, I'll try to make some other useful remarks. Okay, so here is your first view of the Gram-Schmidt algorithm. You're not supposed to get everything from here. We're going to be walking through it step by step with an example soon, but here's the idea. Our input, once again, is k vectors, which are a basis for some subspace L. And our output will be u1 through uk, some other vectors, which will be a better basis for L, better because they will be orthonormal. So the way this algorithm works is we are going to have a loop, which we're going to go through k times, and each time through that loop, we're going to do two steps. One step is going to be a projection. We're going to project the vector vj onto the orthogonal complement of the vectors that we have found of the good vectors that we've built already. So the first step is going to be a projection. And we'll call the output of that projection wj. And then that projected vector will be perpendicular to our previous vectors, but it won't have length one we'll rescale it to make it have length one. So k loops through the algorithm. Every loop we do project rescale, and at every step our vectors get better. One thing that's gonna be slightly confusing is that the first time through the algorithm, the projection step won't do anything. Okay, so let's walk us through in an example. So my example is going to be a three-dimensional plane in four-dimensional space. A basis for that plane is v1, v2, v3, these three vectors you see here. And this is not an orthonormal basis. These three vectors have length the square root of two, not one. And the dot product of v1 with v2 or v2 with v3 is negative one, not zero. So we want to replace this basis by a better orthonormal basis. The first thing we're going to do 
So this is the first loop through the algorithm. And on the first step, projection doesn't do anything, so we're at the rescale step. So we are going to rescale our vector v1 to make it length one. We divide it by its length, so it will, be, so it will become length one. In our example, we take v1 and we divide by the square root of two, which is the length of v1, and that gives us our vector u1 is one over square root of two times the original vector v1. I'm going to record up here at the top of the screen the things we have computed so far. So now I have a new vector u1. These vectors u1, v2, v3 form another basis for my space. And the first vector in this basis is length one, so that's a little bit better, but it's not perpendicular to anything, and the other two vectors still have the wrong lengths. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fix the fact that u1 is not perpendicular to v2. To do that, I'm going to take v2 and project it onto its component orthogonal to u1. So let's make a little drawing of what's happened so far. Here's v1, here's v2. Here's u1, u1 is a length one rescaling of v1. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to decompose the vector v2 into a piece perpendicular to u1 and a piece parallel to u1. And that piece here, this vertical piece perpendicular to u1, that's going to be my w2. OK, so in formulas, w2 is v2 minus u1 on v2 u1. Here's that formula. Let's do it the example. v2 is this vector here. Here's u1 dotted with v2. Here's u1 again. The dot product is negative one over the square root of two. That one over square root of two combines with another square root of two to give it one half. Have a negative one combines with this negative sign to give it positive. So all in all, the second term is plus one half, one negative one zero zero, which equals one half, one half negative one zero. The point of this vector is that this vector is in the same plane as the vectors v1 and v2 but it is now perpendicular to u1. And you can check that by taking the dot product with u1 and seeing that you get zero. Okay. Um, if I were teaching in a classroom, I would pause for longer here. You might want to pause your video for a bit, but I'm going to move on. So at this point, we now have u1, w2, and v3. And once again, they form a basis. So these three vectors are another basis for my space. The vector u1 has length one, and the vector w2 is perpendicular to u1, but the vector w2 does not have length one. So to make it have length one, I'm going to just rescale it. So, if I take u2 dot u2, sorry, w2 dot w2, I'm going to get 1 half squared plus 1 half squared plus 1, and that equals 1.5. So I'm going to divide I w2 by the, by the square root of 1.5, and that will be my vector u2. Here that expression is, and I've cleaned it up a little bit um, over here. So now I have three vectors, u1, 
U2 and V3, here they are, that once again form a basis, U1 and U2 are length one and U1 is perpendicular to U2, you can check that the dot product is zero, but V3 is not perpendicular to these vectors. So that's the next thing I'm going to fix. So to do that, I project V3 onto the component which is orthogonal to U1 and U2. And so the formula that I get from doing that is that my new W3 is going to be V3 minus U1 dot V3 U1 minus U2 dot V3 U2. Here that is in our example. So here is my V3. Here is my U1, and here it is again. Here is my U2, and here it is again. And here is my vector V3, V3. So we plug everything in. Um, as it happens, this is just the, how it happened in this example. There's a deep reason for this. U1 and V3 are already perpendicular. So this dot product is zero and I just get the zero vector here. But my second dot product is not zero. And after you clean up all the work, I'm not going to do every step here. You'll get that you have a plus one third here. And so my vector W3 is one third, one third, one third minus one. What you're supposed to notice is that one third, one third, one third minus one is perpendicular to both U1 and U2. You could dot it with U1 or U2 and you get zero. And so there is my W3. Our basis has gotten better and better. Now U1, U2, W3 forms a basis where u1 is length one, u2 is length one, and u1 dot u2 is zero. Oh, and u1 and u2 both dot to zero with w3. The only thing I don't have is that w3 is not length one. That's easy to fix. I'll just rescale it by its length, and here is my u3. So the key point is the u's are an orthonormal basis. If you take any of these vectors you, and dot it with itself, you'll get one. If you take any of two of these vectors and dot them with each other, you'll get zero. So the U's are an orthonormal basis for the same plane that the V's were a basis for. So you can check that the U's are also spanning the plane W plus X plus Y plus Z equals zero. And then finally, I just want to show you this slide again. Now that you've seen the example, we're going to go through our loop k times, one for each dimension of L. Each time we're going to make a new vector u1, a new vector uj, which will be in our final basis. So we're going to make u1, u2 up to uk. And along the way, we'll also make w1, w2 up to wk. So the first thing we do is we compute w by this equation. And the point of that equation is that it gives us something which is perpendicular to u1, u2 up to uj minus one. So now we have a vector which is perpendicular to the u's that came before, but doesn't have length one. Our second step is we rescale to make a vector uj, which does have length one. Okay, that is the Gram-Schmidt algorithm. I will stop here. You'll get some chances to practice it in your homework. And we'll talk some about what it's good for and about QR decomposition next week.